Alrighty, so, Geometry B, how you doing? So the first thing we're going to talk about in this unit on quadrilaterals are these seven specific types of quadrilaterals. So being able to identify these is a pretty important part of what we're going to be doing in this unit. So let's start off with this. What the heck is a quadrilateral in the first place? So a quadrilateral is essentially just a type of polygon. You might be asking yourself now, like, what is a polygon? And so a polygon is a specific style of shape, if you will. Right? Basically what it means is that it's a shape where all of its sides are straight lines. Right? They're all just little line segments going from one to the other. We're not talking about things that are curved. We're not talking about circles. We're not talking about half moons or anything like that or any other Lucky Charms marshmallow type shapes. Right? We're just talking about things that have straight sides. So a quadrilateral is a type of polygon, but specifically it's a polygon with four sides. It's, it's right in the name, quadrilateral, right? Quad means four. Lateral is kind of talking about sides. So quadrilateral, polygon with four sides. So when we're talking about the parallelogram family, right, that's one specific family of quadrilaterals, right? We're going to talk about a couple of them. So the first one up here is just a parallelogram itself. A quadrilateral is going to be a parallelogram if and only if both pairs of its opposite sides are parallel. All right, so just as the name implies, right, parallelogram, right, has to have a lot of things that are parallel, right? When we have a diagram like the one over to the side, right, what we're going to need in order to be able to tell that it's a parallelogram is it'll have those little arrows there. Right? That's really all we need to say that something's a parallelogram. Right? It has these two pairs of opposite sides. The ones with one arrow each are parallel from each other. The ones with two arrows each are parallel from each other. It's really all it means to be a parallelogram. However, right, when you're talking about the parallelogram family, there's a couple other different types. Right? We're going to talk about a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square. Each of those is also a type of parallelogram. Right? So up here, we've got a rhombus. Right, what we're going to say is that a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. All right, so don't, don't forget that congruent means that they're the same size. Right? So when we're talking about congruent sides, right, if I put one little tick mark on that side there over on the right hand side, what that means is that, that the length of that side is the same as all of these other ones that I'm putting those markings on. Right? So the fact that it's a rhombus is because all of those sides are the same length. And so, again, these kind of fit into multiple categories, right? A rhombus is a type of parallelogram, right? What we're going to see is that if you're thinking about a rhombus, like, oh, all the sides are the same size. That's something that we also see when there's a square, right? So a square is also a type of rhombus. Right, so all of these things kind of fit into multiple categories, which is something we'll kind of talk about as we get further and further in. All right, but for right now, you know, rhombus has four congruent sides. We've got a rectangle, everybody's favorite, right? It's like a square, but you don't have to worry about making everything even. So a rectangle is a quadrilateral if and only if it has four right angles. And as we know from geometry part A, right, when you have a right angle, it measures 90 degrees. The only things that I need to see in here to make sure that it's a rectangle are these little tiny box marks in the corners, right, telling me that those are 90 degrees a piece. And so again, a rectangle doesn't necessarily make it a rhombus, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that all the sides are the same. Right? In fact, oftentimes they're not. But it is a type of parallelograms, right? So a rectangle does have two pairs of opposite parallel sides. Right? But it's just a more specific type of parallelogram. Last but not least, we've got a square. Right? So a quadrilateral is a square if and only if it has four congruent sides. And for right angles. Right. Um, 
Um, when we're talking about four right angles, they like they are going to be congruent, right? They're all going to be the same. Right? So we do need a couple different types of markings in here, right? So we need all those angles to be the same, right? They're all 90 degrees. What we also need is we need to show that all of the sides are the same. Right? So a, a square is kind of like the mishmash between a rectangle and a rhombus, right? It's got all those right angles going on. It's got all those sides that are the same. Right? So a square is specifically what you get when you have all of that at the same time. And again, a square is also a type of parallelogram, right? That's why we kind of group all these together underneath the parallelogram family. Right? They're all nice and snuggled up together having a nice Thanksgiving dinner. All right, so we've also got the kite family. So a kite is slightly different, right? A kite is not going to be a type of parallelogram. That's why it's got its own family. And unfortunately, it's a family of one. We're just going to talk about kites. So a quadrilateral is a kite if and only if. Oops. It has two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. All right, so we're talking about consecutive sides, right? It's just what it sounds like, right? Consecutive means one thing after the other. So when I'm looking over at this diagram, right, I've got two different kites here. If I'm looking at the one that, you know, looks more like, oh, it's a Charlie Brown kite. Look at that. You just attach a string and you're good to go. And what we're talking about is if I'm talking about this side here, right, and I'm calling that, you know, certain distance that I'm marking with one little tick mark there, right, the consecutive side that it's congruent to is the one that's right next to it. Right, and same thing goes for these sides on the bottom, right, so they have to be consecutive sides. All right, we can also do the same thing over on this other one, right? You might be thinking to yourself, like, that second one doesn't look like a kite. That's ridiculous. So we've actually got two different types of kites here. All right, we've got this one, which is a convex kite, and this one, which is a concave kite. All right, so you may have heard people talking about convex and concave, you know, whenever you've learned about, like, how light refracts or, like, how eyeglasses work. And so convex just means that it's kind of like a balloon, right? Everything's kind of like pointing outwards. There's no place where you're, you're like going to hide something. Uh, concave, I like to think about it. It's like, oh, yeah, if you're going in here, right, it's like going into a cave. That's where the bears live. So if you could hide a bear in your shape, it's probably concave, right? You could even have something sort of like, I'm just going to kind of freehand a sketch here. Or you could have something like that. To be concave, it doesn't need to be all that deep of a cave. It just needs to have that kind of like bend inwards. Right? So you can have a convex kite or a concave, or sometimes people say it as a non-convex kite. And that's the whole kite family. Not too bad. We've also got the trapezoid family here. Right? So a trapezoid's got a couple different things that we need to talk about before we really get into what they are. So the first thing is we got to talk about what the heck a base is. Right? So the base is are the parallel sides of a trapezoid. Right, so a, a trapezoid is going to have two bases to it. Right? You're going to have either one that looks like it's on the top and bottom or left and right or whatever it is. But you're going to have specifically two sides that are parallel with each other that are called those bases. We've also got the base angles. Right? And base angles are, you know, angles the whoops let's see if i can get this thing back there we go so base angles are angles whose vertices right, and remember that when we're talking about vertices we're talking about kind of like where the angle turns right it's kind of like the interior part of the angle it's where you kind of like zoop, and then it's kind of so the vertex vertex of an angle is that little piece where it kind of turns in the middle and so Base angles are angles whose vertices are on the end of a base. Right, so when we're on the end of a base, right, that makes it a base angle. Right, so we've got two different types of trapezoids in this nice little family here. So the first one, right, just a regular old trapezoid. What we're going to say is that a quadrilateral is a trapezoid if and only if it has one pair 
oops, let's see, one pair of opposite parallel sides. Alright, so we're talking about one pair of opposite parallel sides, right? If you're taking a look at this diagram over on the right, all that means is that this top part and this bottom part those are the most likely candidates to be parallel to one another, right? That's a trapezoid. That's all it needs. One pair of opposite parallel sides. Boom. Done. When we've got an isosceles trapezoid, it gets to be a little bit pickier, right? So it's kind of like how we moved down the parallelogram family. We went from, oh yeah, it's just some parallel stuff. To we went all the way to a square where it's oh they're parallel and they're the same size and there's right angles and all that stuff so an isosceles trapezoid is just like a more specific type of trapezoid all right so we're going to say is that an isosceles trapezoid happens if and only if it has one pair of opposite parallel sides and one pair of congruent base angles. All right, so when we're talking about one pair of congruent base angles, right, it could be a couple things. So first off, we need to have the opposite parallel sides, just like on the last one. All right, hunky-dory, all set to go there. The other piece can kind of depend, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at two different situations I might have if I wanted to call this an isosceles trapezoid. Right, I might have these two angles that I'm marking up here in blue. Right? Those are base angles. Right? Their vertex right, is on the end of a base right, for both of them. Right? So that could be it, right? An isosceles trapezoid. All right, cool. Those two angles on the base are the same. Good enough. Right. What we could also have is we could have something like I'm going to mark up here in orange. Right. I could also just have, you know, the red and the orange markings there, right, showing that those base angles are the same. So it could be either, you know, off of one base or the other base. As long as you've got one of them, then you're all set. All right. So this is kind of a shorter one. We've talked about the seven different types of quadrilaterals. So what I'd ask you to do is check on Google Classroom to see what the rest of the info is on this and see what I'm going to have you guys do, and that'll be that.